Hi there, and welcome to the June edition of Library and Media Technology Tidbits. Our focus today is going to be on bringing data to life using infographics. I'm Jennifer Northrup, the Region 8 Digital Teaching and Learning Consultant. I also serve as the NC Wiseau Support Person. I've included my contact information on this slide, so feel free to contact me at any time. I've included a bit.ly address so that you can navigate to our wiki page that includes more information related to this webcast. So let's get started. As we all know, using data is an integral part of any successful program, as well as part of the School Library Media Coordinator professional standards. I know the thought of using data can sometimes be intimidating. I often joke that I would be in a lot of trouble when it comes to data but fortunately, I'm married to a math guy. He would probably get a real laugh out of the fact that I'm doing today's broadcast and talking about ways to convey data. Seriously though, don't let data intimidate you. It's important to recognize while data helps you advocate for your program, it also provides information to help you reflect on your program and make changes for the future. One thing to remember is that you need to make decisions early on about the types of data you would like to collect. Be sure to consider why it's important and what message it conveys. While circulation data can be useful, all it really tells us is that so many books left and so many came back. What does it really tell us about student learning? Keep in mind that you don't want to wait until the end of the school year to begin gathering information for things like annual reports. This will just leave you frustrated. Instead, set a aside time weekly or monthly to work on documentation that will later assist you with these types of reporting options. Once you have your data collected and have drawn some conclusions, you have to start thinking about how you're going to relay the information to various stakeholders. And while narratives are important, images and graphics help convey the message very effectively and grab the attention of stakeholders. So, what is an infographic, really? I think this infographic, created by Customer Magnetism, really does a great job of explaining what an infographic is. Basically, you're looking at one right now. It's a fun and quick way to learn about the topic. So, think about it as a data-rich visualization and a tool to educate and inform. The value of an infographic? Wow, look at this statistic. High quality infographics are 30 times more likely to be read than text articles. Think about how much information you need to convey at a quick glance to really make this type of impact. You know, if someone's more likely to look at an infographic, what do you need it to say about your program and the things happening in your library? So let's take a look at some tools that we can use to create infographics. The first infographic creator I'm going to talk about is Easily. So you have some different options with Easily. Again, this is a free account. You can, of course, get some pro options, but it is free to use. You'll see here that you start fresh by clicking on this box. And then your dashboard comes up and you're able to begin creating. You can always start from scratch and clear the items on the canvas if you'd like. They have something they call Veeams, which is visual plus themes, and so you have to start by dragging these into your workspace. There are also objects, and you can add text as well. So the one thing that's really kind of confusing for me sometimes about Easily is I want to work um, you know, when I want to select an object, for instance, to add, I can go to my images and I want to add an animal. So when I click it, I keep thinking, oh, nothing's happening. You actually, this works from a drag and drop kind of perspective. So you're just going to drag and drop the items that you want. And then you can adjust the size and play with them once you have them here in your workspace. Let's take a look at some of the beams. So they have these various beams already set up. And you can just scroll through and find one that you might like, a template. Um, I think I'm going to select this one here. Okay, that's what I want. Now you'll notice 
I can just take a quicker look here. Again, you have to drag and drop the one you want into your workspace. So there we go, it's made the changes. Then I can add a title. Oops, it helps to spell infographics correctly. And of course, that's going to be a little big, so I'm going to have to adjust it, just the size of my box. So just like you would do with any um, graphic program, you can make some edits and things here. You also have text options like bold, italicize, underline. Um, you can change the color. You can align it differently. You can change the font and size. Okay. You can also add objects like we discussed before. There are several different categories here banners. So if I wanted to add a banner, I could do so. Now let's not talk about my graphic design ability on this one that I'm just kind of showing you how it works. Um, that takes some skill and time. I'll be honest, I feel like graphic design is really difficult for me and that's why I like infographics. It gives me a lot of tools that I can use to build better products, but it also takes some time to get some of those design elements down as well. You also can add shapes, text of course, charts. So you can choose different charts that you would like to add. And again, you need to drop it down there and you can make the changes right in line. So, you know, if you want the red, you can put the number that you want represented there. So all you have to do is click on the box, click update chart, and it would create your chart as indicated. You can also upload uh, your own images as well, so that's really important to remember. You have an undo and a redo feature. You also have a download feature. So you can do low quality, high quality, or PDF. Of course, if you're wanting to show this to someone, you probably want to keep it as a high quality. You can clear it at any time. So I'm like, oh, this is terrible. I'm going to clear that and start over. Okay, you can choose to share it with a shareable link or an embed code. So lots of different options there for you to use with easily. It does take a little um, navigating and eventually you'll find that it's pretty easy. I think for me the biggest thing, and I keep reiterating this and that's probably because I had the most trouble with it, is remembering to drag the items you want to use into your workspace. That's really important because I'll sit here and click and click on it and think, oh, why isn't this working? So just, just an important warning for you there. You can, of course, save these to come back on later. So they'll be there for you to refer to at a later time. The next infographic tool that we're going to take a look at is PictoChart. And you can see here from PictoChart that you can select the infographic format that you'd like to use, whether it's infographic, a report, a banner, or a presentation. Just know that when you click on these, you don't automatically get a workspace. Instead, you'll see down here that the templates change as you select each different option. So then you want to scroll down and do create your own infographic. And now you get your own workspace. Now in looking at the workspace, you're gonna notice that you work in blocks. So you work with each of these pieces individually. I'm just gonna start by talking about each of the different features that you're able to use with PictoChart that are over here on the left-hand side. We have graphics options, so you can do shapes and lines. So I'm gonna use, I don't know, let's put the star over here. I can, of course, adjust it. Move it around as I see fit. I can also reorder the blocks. So if I decide I want that as the second block, I can easily just select over here to do that. There are various settings you can choose over here as well to resize your content, um, change the canvas width, and so forth. As you scroll down the graphics, you also have icons photos. There are some different categories for photos. You could choose education, for instance. Drag this nice little computer book over here. That's what my workspace looks like today, right? Actually, no, definitely no cameras involved today. And you also have photo frames, so you could also include those. 
and then you drop your photo into this space. Okay, I'm going to actually delete that. You'll also notice though as you click on these different elements you have different features that show up here at the top and of course as you scroll over it does allow you to make these various options. Um, it even includes the ability to link so you could link content from the actual image if you'd like. And then you can also upload your own images if you would like as well. Backgrounds, I can just choose a color so we can make that red. And then I also have all these different background choices I can choose from as well. So if I wanted to just drop and drag it there, I could do the different blocks, different colors, although be careful about doing that because you don't want too much um, of a pattern to distract from the quality of the infographic data that's being shared. Text, you can add titles and subtitles. I'm going to delete these question marks that they have here for us automatically. I know that's a wild background, but we're just kind of playing right now. And I can just double click, add infographic. I can easily change the font. Of course, you may have to resize your box as appropriate or change your font size. So you just have to make some decisions about how, how you'd like your text to look there. So there are different options, subtitles, body text, text frames. You can also do these little elements here. And again, you can just manipulate these however you'd like to make your infographic. There are also, also some tools available, including charts. So you would just input your data here. You can import your data, and then you insert your chart. I'm going to do that again. I'm going to delete both of these elements so you can take a better look at charts. If you'll notice, there are all these different charts. This is one thing I really like about PictoChart is the ability to choose from a variety of charts uh, to include in your infographic. I think it's great. So however you want to do it, you can include that information. And then again, I click Insert Chart, and there it is. All right, so again, lots of great options there. You can also include maps. So if you wanted to include some maps with population data, for instance, I could do insert map. And you can see what that would look like as you mouse over each individual state. So that's a really nice feature as well. And you can also insert videos. So YouTube and Vimeo are both supported. So you can put those in this infographic as well. Uh, keeping in mind though that you of course are going to probably share this particular infographic if you have video. You're going to share a link as opposed to um, printing it out. And then there is this new, I've not tried this, import with SurveyMonkey. So you can import survey data from there. Of course you want to probably give your infographic a nice title. It saves automatically as you're working. You can look at a preview of what it's going to look like. You can also choose to download it. Now keep in mind that original and medium are the only options you have uh, from the free version. So just kind of be aware of that. All right. Uh, it is going to have a watermark on it as well. PDF, same thing. You're going to actually have to um, purchase that option. And then we can also share it. So either through a picto card, which is an email, social media, or Evernote. Uh, to do this in SlideShare, you would, of course, have to, to level up to their more advanced version. So that's just kind of a quick overview of PictoChart. I'm going to exit the preview. You can also go to the file, create new, save it. Don't forget to save a copy. That's really important. And then, of course, you can go right here and download your image. Um, so that's another way to get to the save feature as well. All right. So that's a look at PictoChart, and we're going to move on to our next tool. So Canva is the last tool that we're going to take a look at today. It's probably one of my favorites simply because it's got a lot of design options, so beyond infographics. It also has a design school, so if you're like me and you're a little challenged in the design department, you can go in um, and view these different design videos that they have so that you can kind of, you know, get some ideas and 
and move forward that way. So they have a tutorials and teaching materials as well. Then the other options here, you have you know, various options. If you click more, you get a vast number of design options. So as you can see, I'm just scrolling down. Lots of things here that you can create. Now, of course, there are some new ones, which I haven't seen before, so that's exciting. Uh, of course, infographic is one of these. So with infographics, you have some layout options that show up over here that you can use. I'm just going to pick one and drop it in. Okay. So I can just take one of these existing templates and add information that I want specific to myself. So like I could type in info. I could change the numbers. So I can just make any necessary changes here and kind of have a template already laid out. So that's something to consider. And of course, each of these blocks has different features. So you'll notice like picture elements you would select separately and so forth. Let me go in over here so I can zoom in and you can get a better look. And that again is over here on the left side. And of course, I can change each of these elements. I can change the color of those as well. I'm going to make this dog red. I can also, of course, you know, send things to the back if I want. I can change fonts. I can change sizes and font colors. So I kind of deal with each element individually. Okay. So that's one thing that you can do is take these that already exist. So there are quite a few, you know, a few that you can choose from. And you notice that the more you scroll, the more you get. And then you can add a variety of text. So if I want to take everything out of this particular box, I don't want any of this anymore. I can choose these really nice text images. So I'm going to put Tranquility Day Spa right here. I wonder where my mind's at today. Okay. And you can change the text in these as well. And again, each of these elements, you're allowed to change the color, the font size, um, and the font itself. So you have lots of different options here. You can also change the justification of those as well. So all of these are able to be edited. Now you'll notice that some are marked free. But as you get down here, these images a little later on, you'll notice that these cost a dollar. So again, here are some text options. You have balloons, lots of different things to choose from. You can also change your background color. I could make that pink in that block. And again, this actually changed the vast majority of it. I ha I'd have to change these actual boxes. Oops. What did I do? Oh, here I want to actually choose the box color. My fault. Sorry about that. So this actually just does the background, but these individual boxes that are in here that have been added, you would have to change separately. You can also do various pattern backgrounds that they have available. You'll notice that this one's a dollar. And of course, um, you know, you can't publish this at this time with the one that costs, but you can choose one of these others that have a pattern. And this would be free for you to use. And you can add an additional page if you'd like as well. You can also share items here. So you can share it on Facebook or Twitter. You can email it. And you can also download the item as an image or high quality PDF. And it says there are some other options here. So you can do all pages, pages and range. So you can make some choices. I'm going to actually not make that public. I don't want to do that. So you can make it public or keep it private. And you saw how I did that. And then you can always go back to Canva if you'd like. Um, if you're like, wow, I'm kind of done with this one. I don't really like it. I want to start over. But you could go back and look at your designs that you have available. And you'll notice this is the one I just did. It's still locked. And then I can just click this arrow right here. This was really hard for me to find at first when I wanted to get rid of it. You just click this and click delete. So just it's been deleted now. And I do have the option if I accidentally do it to undo at that exact moment. 
So that's our third and final tool we're going to talk about today. This is just a reminder of the infographic tools that we've covered today. Easily, PictoChart, and Canva. All of these have very different features that can help you give visual appeal to your data. So be sure to share these with us when you finish. We're really excited to see what infographics you have to offer. Make sure that whatever tool you use, that you adhere to your local policy and follow the site's terms of service. Good luck as you create annual reports and various other data elements that help others see what a school library media program can add to any school community. Be sure to share your information with a variety of stakeholders. We'd also like for you to complete an evaluation of today's webcast. You can do this by visiting bit.ly slash lmttdata. We look forward to hearing from you. And that's all for the June edition of Library Media Technology Tidbits.